we want to kind of visually illustrate the way that, that we used to see money, the way that a lot of married couples see money, and the reason why a lot of couples get into arguments over money, and then we're gonna open up the Bible and discover what God wants us as husbands and wives to do with money. So, yes. these boxes represent the different compartments where most of us think, all right, this is where I have to put money. There's the hours bucket, yes. that when money comes in, we've gotta put some in here, we pay bills from here. Then there's his and hers. We want these boxes to be as big as they can for our individual like right. stuff that we do. And then there's the future, like we're saving for retirement, mm -hmm. and then God. Maybe we're not tithing, but we're just, we're, we're saving some up. I've got yeah. actual fake money. Uh, he loves this. That I got on Amazon he for 10 it. bucks. So I got these wads of hundreds. My neighbor saw me open these envelopes. All my neighbors think I'm a drug dealer right now. They do. Like I drive down the street and it's like breaking bad. Everybody just kind of backs up. What's like, going on at the Willis Is that house? El Chapo? Who is that? I'm like, look, it's fake money from Amazon. I, I drive a minivan. <laughs> like, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> But this, this money comes in, and this is kind of what we do. Like, we, we, put, we put some in the, in the hours. Yep. And then we try, you know, we put some in his and hers. Yep, we're like. And then, you know, we kind of give God a, a tip. We're not, like, maybe tithing yet, but we just throw something in there for the Lord. And then, you yep. know, a little bit for the future, and maybe there's a little bit left over. Yeah. And, and this is the way that we tend yes. to see money. But I'm telling you, this is the principle, this one principle that helped us see money in a different way. Here's, here's one verse to change the way we see money. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Yep. The world and all its people belong to him. Once we realized we don't own anything, it set us free. Yeah. We don't own anything. We're, we're rich, we possess everything like the Apostle Paul says in God's kingdom as his sons and daughters, but we don't own, we don't have a, a, an ownership over anything. We're temporary managers of everything we have, our own bodies, our life, everything we have is a temporary. So instead of it looking like this, we realize, okay, first off, there's no his and hers in marriage. Yep. His and hers is the language of divorce. So it's only ours. Right. You know, it's our future. God is in the middle. God is in the center. And when God's in the middle, here's what you realize. God's not the little box. He's really the big box that every part of us goes within. It's all his. It starts with him. It's it ends with him. him. We're temporary managers. That's right. So yes. and that, we... that set us free. That one little thought that, God, it's all yours. So how do you want us to manage your money? It's, it's not our time. It's your time. How do you want us to manage our time, God. How, how do you want us to, to lead this family? All of it is something that you've entrusted to us. Help us be good stewards. It's so true. When we understand this, there's just going to be more peace in our marriage because then you don't have this, this fight over who's bringing in more money. Because I think a lot of times couples have issues with finances because one spouse is making more money and they're like, I'm the breadwinner. I'm bringing home the bacon. I'm who pays for this house. I'm who pays for these food. And so you shouldn't have a say in this money. You know, you don't make as much as me, or maybe you don't even make an income at all. Maybe you're staying home with the kids, or maybe you have an illness that prevents you from working. Maybe, you know, whatever the scenario is, when, when we look at the money itself and we put the value on that money and say, well, that person's more important because they bring in more money, that's automatically going to put a couple against each other. And then that's where secrets come too, because sometimes, you know, maybe both are, are managing their own funds they bring in and they don't really tell the spouse what's going on with their money, their money, because they see it as their money and it causes these fights and it causes secrets. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've met with couples and they say, you know, their marriage just isn't working and we find out that there's like a secret stash of money, just in case. And that's the kind of thinking that just leads to divorce because it's like you have one foot in the door and one foot out the door and you're not being honest about your finances. And, and then when you're not being honest about your finances and you're not talking through it, you start being dishonest about other things. And before you know it, you're getting further and further apart and you don't have the connection that you want and that God wants you to have. And so there can't be this dynamic where one spouse knows everything coming in and out of the finances and the other is completely in the dark. Even if one spouse is better with money, because I know you're listening to me, those people who are good with money in here are like, but I'm better at money. My spouse isn't good with money. But even if that's the truth, you can be that primary person who's helping to get your finances in order, but you still have to bring your spouse in the picture and let them know what's going on. You still have to talk about everything coming in and everything going out. And you still have to believe and know that it all comes from the Lord. No matter how much or how little you are making, it all comes from Him. He's the one who created you. He gave you that body that can go out and do work, that mind to think and do the things that you're doing, the gifts that you have to bless this world. It all comes from Him. Mm. You are so hot when you get fired up. <laughs> I love it.